Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and address this one early. As soon as the Ping G430 range of drivers was released, I really liked them. I loved the LS Tech, I loved that carbon crown, and the Ping G430 Max seemed like the most forgiving driver, well, ever. It was jam-packed full of technology. We had the movable tungsten weight at the back. We had that incredibly forgiving forge face. We also have adjustable loft and turbulators on top, of which I've never really been a fan of, but you didn't really have to hit this driver that well to get the results that most golfers do want. Very similar to that shot there. That's my first swing of the day. It's very early and pretty cold here in the UK. And this driver seems to want to perform all the time. How can this possibly get better? How could the Ping G430 Max driver get any more forgiving? Well, the story continues with this. Introducing the brand new Ping G430 Max 10K driver. Now this is looking like potentially the most forgiving driver ever made and we have heard 10k in numerous driver releases so far this year. So this refers to how much forgiveness the driver does have. I'm going to get into the tech of this brand new Ping G430 Max 10k driver today but the first thing I want to do is explain just how good this driver looks, just how easy to hit this driver looks and also we now have the carbon flyer wrap on the top of this driver which the LS Tech driver did feature last year and I think it looks beautiful. The one thing that I would say about the G430 Max is it didn't feel very good, it didn't sound amazing, it didn't look as good as the low spin model on top and that might just be me thinking oh I want a driver to look pretty much perfect and now apart from the turbulators which are very subjective I think ping are pretty much there. And from experience of hitting this driver inside, comparing it to the other ping models, which we'll talk about later in this video, I can safely say not only does it look better, but that sounds incredible. A lot of people might be thinking, oh, but I don't need a more forgiving driver. I don't need the 10K option. But then a lot of tour players are potentially looking at putting this driver in the bag because not only is it mega forgiving but you can hit shots like I've just hit there because spin rates aren't affected too much you can still hit some quite nice high low spin bombs with this club and you can still hit some nice low penetrating ball flights with this G430 Max 10k check that out that is an absolute rocket up there down the right hand side and the beauty about that is I'm going to show you where I've struck that on the face here because that was nowhere near the centre of the club. The first shot that I hit, that nice low knuckleball, that was a centre strike. That was probably around a 2,200 spin, around maybe a 160 ball speed. The one I've just hit there out of the toe was probably around a 2,000 spin, maybe a 157 ball speed. And I know this because I've been in the studio already and tested this driver. So make sure you stay tuned if you want to see that with a comparison against the standard G430 Max. And also hit that subscribe button guys if you want to see a comparison against other drivers on the market, which are potentially claiming to have 10,000 inertia, which is grams per smiller, I don't know, I'm not that scientific. But what I can do is launch this down that fairway. Like that. Oh, yes, please. Oh, you don't even need to hit the middle. Now, one of the huge factors that I love about this driver is Ping haven't gone for a full rebrand. They haven't gone, oh, let's call it the G435, let's call it the G440, because I think they know that the G430 is a fantastic range of drivers, and they wanted to keep the LS Tech and the Max in the lineup, keep it relevant, because everyone doesn't want to go changing the driver every 18 months, every two years, every 12 months in some driver's cases. What is the big difference then between the G430 Max and the G430 Max 10K? Well, if you look down at the drivers, you will see straight away that we do have that carbon fly wrap on the 10K. I personally think it looks miles better. You can see the ridges on the back are a little bit more pronounced and the head looks a bit more elongated, looks a little bit longer, looks a little bit more forgiving, if you could say that. It's gonna be really interesting to test that against a low spin model and see just how much the difference is in forgiveness elements because I really really like the look of this and I don't usually like the look of forgiving drivers you'll see now that tungsten weight is fixed we don't have the option to go draw or fade bias but then that has allowed ping to restructure the weighting of this club in total so it does just offer that little bit more forgiveness than the standard G430 you can see on the bottom they look very very similar we've got a slightly different finish on the bottom there and I think that's so they have different shelf appeal when it comes to buying off the rack although I would hope 
most golfers go and get fitted when they do look at buying a new driver, especially for the price that any driver is going to cost you this year. The faces look very similar, although the G430 Max 10K does look like it's got a little bit of a bigger surface area. So it's going to offer maybe a little bit more confidence down at the ball. And when it comes to the branding, like I said, I think it just keeps the ping fans happy. It keeps them like, you know what? I don't need the new driver, but I'm quite pleased that the G430 is still relevant. Oh, by the way, yes. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see that video. That is coming very soon. There's also the small matter of, um, yeah it's going to be a very very fun couple of weeks guys don't go anywhere if you want to see the latest golf clubs coming in 2024 one of the big burning questions i think a lot of people will be asking in this video is james i already have a ping g430 max i've had it for a couple of months i've really enjoyed it should i move into the brand new ping g430 max 10k driver and why on earth didn't ping release this at the time of the standard g430 max because for me i feel now let down i've spent my money on a g430 max a g430 max ls and now ping have brought this out a little bit later on i personally think it speaks volumes about ping's integrity because i don't think the g430 max 10k was ready i don't think it was perfect i think they've held back a little bit and i take my cap off to them it's haircut time again i always I always take my hat off when I need a haircut, but I think it's really, really good and it shows that they're not going to just release products because they have a deadline. They're going to release it when they feel like it's going to help your game, which is very commendable. And in relation to the question that you're asking, I will go and get fitted and see if you see a difference. If you don't see a difference, don't. And if you do see a difference and you feel like you can get a good trading price and you feel like you're not losing out on too much money, then go for it. But the big thing I want to get across is just how kind of consistent and forgiving this driver could be. It is freezing this morning and very wet as you can see, and we've got very much consistent front to back dispersion. So very, very happy with that. That's one thing that I do want when it comes to drivers at the moment. If I spray it over the face a little bit, I want to know I'm still going to get a level of ball speed, a level of spin rate that allows me to have a nine iron in like we have here on this second hole at Woolley Park Golf Club. So I'm not going to get involved in who came up with the idea that 10K inertia was important first. I'm not going to get involved with who got there first. And I'm certainly not going to get involved in who thinks this could be. Okay, I am going to get involved in the idea that this could be the most forgiving driver ever released. But not only does it claim to potentially be the most forgiving driver ever released, but you'll also see it in the hands of quite a few tour pros in 2024. Because for a tour pro, forgiveness doesn't mean winning the Sunday medal. It doesn't mean driving it past your friends a couple of yards. It means millions and millions of pounds and dollars and euros. So if it's good enough for them, the question I pose to you is, is it good enough for you? And is it good enough for me? Oh, stop it. That could be the best drive I've hit all year. Oh, split it. Already testing this driver for numbers, I'm starting to see I can hit nice low spin shots with this driver. That for me is vitally important. I'm really enjoying testing it in here in the studio as well as out on the golf course. But for me, I need to know that if I put that swing on it, that was 1700 spin. That was incredibly low. So if I can get that launching just a touch higher, then we can hit shots like that. Oh, forgiveness, distance, ease of use. We're just ticking boxes, just ticking them. And I personally feel like the great success this driver may well have all comes down to the fact that yes, it is a mega forgiving driver. Yes, it is designed to give you more inertia, to give you more forgiveness, but also it's not designed to be an anti-slice driver. It's not mega towed in. It's not got loads of weighting in the heel to slow the heel down and speed the toe up and all the rest. It's designed just to give you forgiveness across the face for everyone's mishits. Players like Cam Champ, players like Tony Finau have all been seen testing this driver and I would not be surprised at all if it ended up in some tall players' bags on that basis. You think if a tour pro is wanting a forgiving driver, generally that's going to save them shots. It's going to hit more fairways, which would save them money and that's their job. But you don't need a mega forgiving anti-slice driver if you're a tour pro. You just want to know that if you slightly miss hit it, you're still going to get that ball fly. This is the hardest driving hole on the course for me and that's peeled back into the fairway gorgeously i certainly feel like i can play that shot with ease i've got a load of golf balls here and we're going to just hit a couple and just see just exactly what forgiveness i am getting and if we can hit this fairway 
a handful of times. Then we're going to test it on the final hole against the G430 Max. It's one shot only with each. We're going to hit it as hard as we physically can and see which one goes further. In the middle of that, we're going to talk numbers for this driver, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Can we hit another fairway, or is that a bit of a fluke? Let's try and have less movement on this. Let's go a little bit more kind of straight down it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even this has got me thinking, to be honest. I mean, I review a lot of golf products for you guys so that you guys can get your first opinions on them. Hopefully you enjoy that, and hopefully from there you go and forge your own opinions. But I'm actually starting to think this could potentially be something that I might look at because I'm talking fast here, and I'm talking a lot about tech. I'm talking, like, about Tony Finau and Cam Champ and not really thinking about what I'm doing. And I'm just peeling shots off here that are coming nicely back into the middle of that fairway. And I really feel like it's dumbing it down. I really feel like I'm kind of not thinking too much about the shot, about my swing, which might well allow me to think more about the game in hand when I'm playing in the summer. Because there's more to golf than a golf swing. Right, that's all good and well, but can we play a draw? Why not overcomplicate it, James? Draw it into the middle. Oh, it's drawn, but it's drawing towards the water. This is where you can overthink it. That, oof. I'll zoom in on that. That's unfortunately the first ball of 2024 gone. But we did get it moving. So if I aim right and try and hit that draw, is this actually quite versatile as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's moving again, but I feel like I've unlocked something here. That's, that's miles in it. I feel like I've unlocked something here that might well make this driver more playable for everyone. Because not only is it forgiving, but it's versatile, and it feels great, and it sounds great, and it looks great. I'm struggling to think of any negatives, really. And usually I do find some, so I'll keep thinking. Guys, let's jump in the studio, let's see just how this driver does perform against the standard G430 Max. Then we'll jump back out here, we'll have a long drive contest on the final hole against the standard G430 Max, and see potentially which driver you should be gaming in 2024. So when testing this G430 Max 10K driver, I actually got my first impressions inside. I took the club out of the wrapper and started just trying to hit it nice and hard, to be honest. And first impressions always count for a lot with me. And the first impressions with this 10K driver were quite good. I couldn't believe, first of all, how good it looked down at the ball. I couldn't believe how confident I felt with it. And I couldn't believe just how much better it felt and sounded than the standard G430, which for me is a big thing. For some people, it might not really make a huge difference. Numbers-wise, ball speed was exactly the same. I hit loads and loads of shots with both of these clubs. Spin rate was a tiny bit higher, but realistically, you're not going to see a difference in the ball flight there. And the distances were very, very similar. 272, 271, 285, 283. For me, I didn't feel like I was swinging that well either in testing. So they're really good numbers for me to say I wasn't on it on that day. I mean, for the majority, I'm really happy with that. Unfortunately, you saw the casualty, but we'll take those all day. Okay, so very interesting numbers there and actually very similar. I thought actually the spin rate on the G430 10K might have been a little bit higher, a little bit hard to handle, but realistically, it's quite impressive to say how forgiving this driver is. Right, I'm not going to look at these clubs and we're going to see, I mean, you can tell on top, to be fair, and we're going to see which one goes furthest when I try and absolutely pummel one. Unfortunately, you can tell on top straight away because they do look rather different. This is the standard G430 Max. Try and turn this around the corner and see just what ball flight we can get. That's held really strong. That's the perfect line over this bunker. And that's going to take some beating. I can't believe how well I've hit that. That is bang smack out of the middle of this G430 Max driver. Now, I must say, having hit the G430 Max 10K all day, this feels nowhere near as nice. Right, now we need to try and match that. I feel like we can get a similar flight. And I'm really looking forward to see which one goes furthest. Especially because they're identical. That is literally going down the same tree in the distance. Guys, let's get down there, let's see where they are. That felt incredible. And if you look at where this was stuck out of as well, tiny little bit off centre, but realistically, that is, that's not, is it? That's actually perfect. That felt incredible. Let's go and see where they've finished. So guys, as you can see, we have two balls bang smack in the middle of that fairway, and they are actually really big hits for this time of year on this hole. Is that 10, 15 yards difference here? That could be down to the bounce. It could be down to kind of the conditions, but what do we have? 
That number two is the G430 Max, and that is a G430 Max 10K. That's well and truly put the cat amongst the pigeons. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, smash that subscribe button below. Apart from that, I'll see... Is it got a thumbs? Gives another thumbs... Ah, oh, he's a thumbs up from Chris. Guys, apart from that, I'll see you all at the same time tomorrow. Don't be late. Goodbye.